Love and Accompany Habit number two. Instagram. For you Instagrammers, um, I just put up a song in honor of my nephew. It's called um, Can I Have a Moment? Alright, so you guys can go check that out. It's already on YouTube right now as I speak. For you YouTubers, um, and I guess for you Instagrams, my sister just gave me a flashback moment, so I figured I'd give it to you. It has nothing to do with my nephew. It has everything to do with me. Alright, so you guys are going to get your laugh on today. If I can make somebody else laugh before I go to class, it might help me out because my nephew just passed on Sunday. So it's still fresh even though today is Tuesday. So my sister and I was talking, my elder sister. She was talking in the room and she called me chief. And there's two things that I don't like being called in life. And these are going to be very racist words that are about to fly in my mouth. So let me apologize now. The first thing I don't like is being called chief. Though I am partially Native American, I hate being called chief. The second thing I hate being called is the N-word. So I'm not going to use it, but you get the gist. And you know, lots of people are still using it. And I do my damnedest to not use it. But if I do use it, it is most likely to make a point. I don't think anybody should ever use that word. Even if they spell it with an A-R or an E-R, it's still a very bad word to use. Let's get on making people laugh now. So when I was uh, 16, or turning 16, I had got a new job. My first job ever was at Little Caesars Pizza on Pantops. There were some um, very bad things that was going on there. I wouldn't really say it was bad for them. It might have been bad for everyone else. But, you know, um, I kind of stopped eating there after the um, sexual incident that I caught. You know, just leave it there. You know. I got stories, trust me. I got stories on some jobs that you just wouldn't believe. But this one's more about me. And it's on my job working at Keckler's. Inherently, not everyone is a racist by choice. Sometimes you're a racist and you don't know you're a racist or whatever. So it started with Lou Diamond Phillips. I know you guys are thinking, what the fuck does Lou Diamond Phillips have to do with James Williams Jr.? The answer is absolutely nothing face to face. Hi Lou if you're out there. If you're watching, this is your fault by the way. I don't even know if you're actually a Native American. I think you might be Filipino. Either or. I am part Native American. And thank you Lou Diamond Phillips. And let's see, what was it? Young Guns? Young Guns 2, the movie where you played a Native American with Jennifer Tilly, who I know is not Native American because she's part Filipino and part white. And finally, you and Kiefer Sullivan. Sorry, Kiefer, I mispronounced your last name. Or maybe I mispronounced your first name. Either or, I mispronounced it. And though I would love to be working with you guys one day, that's not going to happen right now unless a gift from God happens. So, Lou Nama Phillips and Kiefer Sutherland made this movie called Renegades came out when I was about 16. And at this time, you know, acting was not my dream. I wanted to be a police officer. So, you know, you pay your dues. I never got to become a police officer. Studying police science and criminal justice is not what I want to do with my life. But it's kind of the ground that I'm in now. I have a keen sense of justice, if you would. So anyway, I'm at work. I'm working at Kegler's it's Bowling Alley, and I'm washing dishes. So I get the job. About eight months in. I'm about to be 16 years old. So, by the time I turned 16, the movie Renegades, it came out. And I saw it. And in the movie Renegades, Lou Diamond Phillips, who does an excellent job as a Native American, does not like being called chief. Well, guess what? I don't like being called chief either. And this is Lou Diamond Phillips' fault. Yes, I'm blaming you, Lou. See, when the movie came out, every time somebody called Lou Diamond Phillips, chief in the movie, he got exceptionally angry and beat the shit out of people. This is why I blame you, Lou Diamond Phillips. Solely you. Solely, solely you. So, after seeing the movie, you know, it kind of made some interesting points. And this is back in the 90s where people used to just call everybody chief. Like, yo, what's up, chief? How you doing, chief? What's up, chief? Or, how's it going, chief? Where are you from, chief? All right, like I said, I'm part Native American, and it shows. So, <laughs> I come to work one day. I don't know this guy from Adam. I still don't know that guy's name till this day. 
But for three years, I known him as the white dude who called me chief. For three years. Three long years of hearing this guy. And granted, it was only on the weekends, right after school, I drive the Kegler's, throw on my little Kegler's t-shirt, hit to go clock in. What's up, chief? And like, dude, after like the first five times, you know, like over weekends, it started getting to the point where there's annoying, there's insulting, and then there's damn right pain in the ass. You can pretty much know where that was going. He was in the damn right pain in the ass part. So, I come to work every day. I make sure my name tag is on. And it's like this dude stalking me. So I come to the door because it's better to go through the front door because it's easier to clock in than to go through the dishwashing door and go all the way down the hall to clock in and come back. And usually when you go in the dishwashing door, there's no time to clock in because your dishes is like way the fuck up here. Anyway, and I'm also short. So, so I go clock in and this guy's always out smoking his Marlboros. He's smoking his Marlboros. It's like he knows my car. Even if I park at the back of the driveway, it's like he'll take a smaller drag on that cigarette. No, it's like he's waiting for me to come to this door. I guess it must have made his day to call me chief. So I get my shirt on. I slap that name tag on that damn thing. And this is when they had pens. I think now y'all might have those magnetic shits. I don't know. Do y'all still use pens? Anyway, so I got my little thing in there. I'm walking up there, and I'm not having a good day. I just got out of school. I've been bullied at school all fucking day long. And I come to the door, and here we go. Hey, Chief. How's it going, Chief? What's up, Chief? Three years. Three fucking years of that shit. It gets better. So, you always knew when he was there, because he only played four songs. Two from Billy Ray Cyrus, My Icky Breaky Heart, and a tush push. One from Garth Brooks, The Thunder Rose, and then Alan Jackson's Way Down Yonder on the Chattahoochee. And I know most of the words of these songs because I heard them every day for three fucking years from the same little white dude who clearly was going through some shit who would not fucking stop calling me Chief. And I mean, it was just awful. Come to work, hey Chief. And then you know, this guy never fucking left, so he clearly had money. It's like he left when the place closed. He wasn't there when we opened, but by the time I got there, he was there. It's like he was like, what's this kid's schedule? I can't wait to get there. Yeah, okay, so he's there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And if I schedule my day to go there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I can piss this little mixed guy off every day by calling him Chief. And you know, I don't want to sound like an ass. Yes, I do, because I am. But, you know, some people do shit to annoy you because somehow or another they get their jollies from this shit. Yeah? <laughs> Let's get some jollies from this shit. Okay, here he comes. Oh. New cigarette. Oh, he's taking his time. Here he comes. This is him talking to himself, by the way. Maybe he's talking to the cigarette. Maybe he's talking to the whole damn pack of cigarettes. Wait, he's in there. And here I come. I get out of my little black Turismo, which I thought was a duster because whoever had the car before me must have crashed the bitch and put duster fenders on the side of the damn thing. So when my car broke down, I'm telling him I have a Dodge Turismo after I found out what the fuck a Turismo is. But while I'm calling them on the phone, I'm like, it says duster on the, the side panels. It's like, dude, you need to go check the glove box. Like, okay. So, I couldn't say Turismo at first. I had to spell it out. And then once I spelled it out, he said, dude, you got a Turismo. I was like, okay, what the fuck is a Turismo? Because, you know, I heard a gizmo from Gremlins. He's in that corner over there. But, um, I never heard of a Turismo. We figured it out. Anyway, so I'm going back to work. And I get up to the door. I'm having a bad day. I've been bullied on by bullies at high school. And this guy comes at me again. What's up, Chief? I'm like, dude, can you please call me by my name? J-A-M-E-S. James. 
And this is a time where your name tag has to actually have your whole fucking name on it. So I didn't go to the Williams part because, you know, Williams is not a Native American last name. See, the advantage of um, females is they get to change their last names. Males probably can do it now, but back then, that was unheard of. So, both my grandmothers are Native American. My mother's mother is Native American, but we're fucking twisted on her actual origin because she was adopted. My dad's mother's and her mother before her, Native American, and went from Wallace to a Ford to a Williams. From woman to woman, last name to last name. Anyway, after that shit, you know, I mean, how many days have you thought that I want to punch this guy? But then when I'm washing dishes and I walk by him and he hits that slot machine. Excuse me, it's not a slot machine, it's a fucking jukebox. So he hits the jukebox. And the first song that he plays, and he always plays this shit in this exact order. You get in there. Don't tell my heart. I hate it, break it heart. I don't think that it understand. I'm like, man, I'm going to achy, break my foot up this dude's ass. But he didn't play it one time before he got to the next song. He played this shit like nine times. I'm like, dude, how much money do you put into this building? Because, you know, I mean, the slot machine, the slot machine, excuse me, the damn jukebox was like a dollar a song. So I can, you can hear the four quarters when they ping, 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 ping. And all of a sudden you hear, don't tell my heart, I hate that break at heart. I just don't think you'd understand. Because if you tell my heart, my achy, breaky heart, I don't know the rest of the words, my man. And he'd be right by the jukebox. And I'd be walking by. And he'd holler again. What's up, chief? And I'd be like, this motherfucker. And I can't afford to lose my job. <laughs> so I just have to take it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I also have to collect dishes sometimes because the busboys wouldn't do their jobs. And when I'm trying to go home, I'm trying to get every goddamn dish on the fucking floor washed. And that includes ashtrays and whatever the hell. So I've, I've played with some primordial muck. Anyway, I come back. You know, watch the guys slice all the fucking shoes or whatever. Because I don't think you can actually wash bowling shoes if they don't belong to you. And you never know whose feet's been in them. But anyway, I come back and he's no longer playing Icky Break Your Heart. Now he's playing, um, I got, um tears or fears or friends or some shit in low places which apparently is Garth Brooks and not Billy Ray Cyrus but anyway I got friends in low places was one song that he played almost 20 fucking times a night and I took the fire in his eyes as I snatched his glass of champagne something 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 and you'll never hear me complain sorry Garth I don't know all the words I knew all the words those three years when I was working there though because, like I said, the guy played that shit like nine fucking times. Then after that, you know, he lightened the mood a little bit. Way down yonder on the Chattahoochee. And it went from that back to Garth Brooks. And the thunder rolls and the lightning strikes. Which is like really the only two songs of Garth Brooks I actually know and like. But I only liked them because I had to hear them for three fucking years. After also hearing, what's up, Chief? How's it going, Chief? How you been, Chief? So, that kills that. Before I go get myself set to go to class, because I have like an hour, um, I'll give you one more Kegler story. This is a good one. And violent. So, you know, if you're following me here on YouTube and Instagram, then y'all know I'm pretty good with my shit. Alright? However... At 16, 17, 18, and 19, you know, um, co-workers just thought I was bullshit. Yeah. So, I would do martial art moves on my break. I'd be outside when i get a break from that. I'd get a, a quick snack. And um, I'd be outside. So, <laughs> go outside, do some comfort moves, maybe 10 minutes, come back in, drink a little bit, wash dishes. So one day I was doing there, and this is a white cat. I was showing him some moves, and I never thought this shit would ever come back to bite me in the ass. So rule number one of being a martial artist now. All your moves can come back to bite you in the ass. Try to remember that. So a couple of weeks go by, you know, and I show this dude all kinds of Van Damme shit. You know, I'm doing all the shit that Van Damme can do. And, 
Van Damme can do it better, but I'm still doing it, and I'm 16, so, you know, I'm not fucking thinking about that kind of shit. I'm just thinking, hey, I know Kung Fu, yay me. So, and I'm doing all the martial art moves and shit, and so this guy goes and gets two of his redneck buddies. Didn't see this shit coming at all. So, I'm taking the trash out, because that's part of my job. And I get to the dumpsters, man. And the last thing I'm expecting is for these white cats to jump me on the job. I mean, it really was cool, but it wasn't cool because, you know, I'm working. You know, jumping me on the job is like the first big X in the things that you probably should not do to anyone. So, I'm busting my ass. I'm at work. I take the trash out. I just dumped the trash in there, and I did the two things that you're not supposed to do as a martial artist. One, never lower your eyes to the enemy. And two, always expect the unexpected, which I did not do. You know, the dude came to talk to me, and before he could open up his mouth, one of his friends went that way, which I wasn't paying attention. The other friend decided that he was going to talk shit, which was the distraction factor, which again, always remember as a martial artist, the most immediate danger is the guy behind you. It's not the guy in front of you. You can see that motherfucker. The guy behind you, on the other hand, he's the most dangerous person. Now, I watched that cat go over this way and throw away a can in the recycling bin. I didn't think for a New York minute that he would come around the dumpster from the other way and grab me like this. Put my arms down here, which is what happened. So when he grabbed me, it was a shock. Because the other dude that was goading me into a fight was doing all the fucking talking. And then they was telling me they're going to whoop my ass. They're going to put me in that trash dumpster. Well, at this time, I'm no longer this. But at the time, I was still claustrophobic. I'll tell you guys that story too. But um, being claustrophobic, you will be amazed at the shit that you will do when you're claustrophobic. All right. Hopefully I'm saying that right. So the guy grabbed me. And he's like, yeah, we heard you know all this karate shit. We got you now, boy. We got you now. And I don't know what it is about young white cats that always think they can call somebody of color boy. But we we're about the same age. And this dude called me boy. My arms are locked like this. His arms are locked like this. And he's flinging me around like a rag doll. I said, yeah, we heard you know all that karate shit. We heard you know all that karate shit. What you gonna do? I got you there. I got you. Started swinging me around. I'm probably a good 115 pounds, if that. <laughs> so, maybe a buck 20 soaking wet. And so I said, okay. <laughs> so while he's swinging me this way, I go this way, and we both bust a flip. We land on his back. He no longer has wind in his body, and I elbow him in the sternum because he's still locked around me. So when I elbow him, I grind my elbow. He opens up, I roll off of him. And I say, okay, now get the fuck up. I'm going to give you the fighting chance that you didn't want to give me. So, and I'm going to tell you something about pretty white girls. They're magic. Come on, damn it. I don't know how to do that. I'm trying to wave. Sorry, y'all. I'm not good with tech. Anyway, so... I rolled off of him, and he couldn't get up, and when he finally could get up, the guy who was doing all the talking, he was just stunned at what he saw. He didn't know what the fuck was about to happen. So the other guy gets up, he's all fucked up, and I'm about to drive one home. I'm about to send him a B-52 bomber right down his throat. Now, I don't know how the hell this happened. This is why I say pretty white girls are magic. She went from 10 steps behind him to right smack dead in front of him in like lickety split timing for those who are too young to know what lickety split timing is go google that shit but I mean it was like the blink of an eye I don't know how the hell she got there but by the time my arm extended her face was in front of his face and I stopped two and a half microseconds from hitting her in the face I was like look here pretty lady you need to just move to the side so I can finish what he started so the guy that I had been showing moves was like, oh my God, no, no, y'all need to leave him alone, leave him alone. So he starts defending me because he was in shock of all the shit that his friends were doing to me. And so when he finally could get up and he could finally breathe, I said, you ready to go? So she starts crying and like, all right, look, you don't want to fight. You take your boyfriend and your friend who runs his mouth and y'all get the fuck on down here and don't bother me no goddamn more. Which is what they proceeded to do. Now, the guy had been showing moves. He was apologizing to me, like, forever. And I was like, look, I don't hold you responsible for your friend's dumb actions. But you should tell them that if they ever come fucking with me again, I'm going to kill them. 
Now, they probably would have whooped my ass had he not threatened to put me in that motherfucking dumpster. Now, it comes the good part. So I have this really big co-worker who's a ginger, and his name was Chris. I don't know his, his last name, but he's a big-ass white dude, like, like six feet six and nothing but muscle. This fucker was watching the whole time. And he goes, damn, I thought you was bullshit with that. You a bad motherfucker. And I'm like, you watch that? He's like, yeah. I didn't know you really knew karate. I thought you was just faking that shit. And then I go again, you watch that? It's like, man, you ain't need my help. I like that part when you was flinging around and then you threw that dude. Like, you clearly watched that. I wasn't flinging around. I was being flung around. No matter. You kicked that dude ass, man. Why didn't you hit the girls? Like, I don't hit girls. It was just some really, I, I guess white guys don't really care about not hitting chicks. But, you know, I didn't hit the girl. So, I get my two trash cans and I'm going back to the kitchen. Mad as hell that one of my co-workers just watched me get jumped and did nothing. <laughs> I get in the kitchen. I put my trash cans up. I go straight to the phone and call my mom. Say, hey, mom, I just got jumped on my job. I need to quit this job. My mom would not let me quit this job. So that was like one of the war stories there. Now let me end this really quick for Instagram and YouTube because I got to yay so much time to get ready for class, um, which will be virtual, by the way. I, give me my mask in class. Anyway, so <laughs> when I was but a boy, my father took me somewhere downtown, and I'm claustrophobic because... As small as I was, I had the intelligence of a pretty intelligent kid, and I hit all the buttons on the elevator. Do not ask me how I could reach all the buttons on the elevator, because I'm pretty fucking short. But somehow, I got trapped in the elevator, which is why, as a grown man, <laughs> it shames me to say this. But as a grown man, um, I take the stairs. <laughs> I take the stairs. I don't care where I am. If stairs are an option, I will take the stairs. It's like, well, we have an elevator. And I was like, yeah. Do you have stairs? Like, not really. The stairs are like to the roof and only to the roof. But you still have to take the elevator to, to get to the stairs. I was like, ah, fuck. So I get in the elevator when I don't have a choice. But believe you me, if there are stairs, I'm going to take the stairs. It's not a health thing. It's a claustrophobic thing. I'm, I'm, I'm over it for the most part, but there are some times where you look in a building, in the construction of a building, when you explore it, you're like, oh dear, maybe I should take the stairs. Now, I can't say the stairs are any safer than the elevator, because, you know, neither one of them has really been field tested, but for me, and only me, if the stairs are an option, I'm going to take the stairs. Will I get to the place faster than you? Probably not. Maybe in my 20s when I could like jump up and down the stairs without having an impact issue for my hip. But you know, now in my 40s, probably not. But if it's an option, I'm going to take the stairs. You guys have been great. I got to get ready for class. Um, I hope you enjoyed my horrible true story about being called chief. I do not like being called chief. I don't like being called chief. I don't like being called the N-word. And it's just something that just probably shouldn't come out your mouth. I also don't like being called half-breed. So if that happens, it's generally in one of my scripts to teach people lessons about being multicultural. You have no idea how many times I've been called half-breed in my life. Even though I'm actually multicultural. So I guess they don't have a multi-breed for a racial slur. But half-breed, good God, man. All through the 70s and 80s, I've been a half-breed. But most importantly, don't call me chief. Unless you want to get punched in the mouth. Thanks for watching. Be seeing you. Come on. Thanks for watching. Comfort Avenue number two. Be seeing you.